The plastics that come into contact with your foods are probably messing with your hormones in ways that could negatively affect your health, or even more so, the health of your kids. Even your future kids, or potentially your lack thereof. Plastics are messing with your hormones. This is a fact of modern life, and if you think you can avoid this problem by only buying packages that say BPA-free on them, who boy, you'd better think again. Honestly, you might not be able to avoid this problem at all, but there are some things you can do to maybe limit your exposure, and you can certainly use your power as a consumer to nudge industry away from plastics that are hurting our health, to say nothing about the environment. Field trip to Raleigh, North Carolina and the campus of NC State University, where Dr. Scott Belcher leads a research lab focused on endocrine disruptors. The endocrine system is the glands in your body that produce hormones, your adrenalines, your estrogens, your testosterones, that kind of stuff. Disruptors can either amplify or suppress the effects of those hormones, and estrogen is a big one when we're talking about food plastics. Uh, what's really important is during childhood development as well as the ability to actually reproduce. It's been shown that endocrine disruptors are associated with um, more than 50% decrease in the quality of male sperm and the sperm counts. And there may be important impacts on uh, reproduction and fertility uh, in Western civilization as we go on where there's more and more chemicals uh, coming into our foodstuffs and our, and our other products. I'm gonna level with you and say this is something I avoided learning about for a long time. Not only because I do love my plastic wrap, but also because it just sounds like some kind of 4chan fever dream. There's a chemical in the food and it's turning all the alpha males into betas. But you know, there is a real thing here. Dr. Belcher was among the researchers who rang the alarm bells about bisphenol A. Up until a few years ago, BPA was ubiquitous in the kitchen. Plastic cutting boards, resealable containers, water bottles, and cans. Specifically, the plastic lining that's on the inside of all cans, which, by the way, was a good innovation. When I was a kid, it was like, oh my gosh, that can has a dent in it. You know, you're going to get botulism and die immediately. Well, we haven't heard much about botulism because these epoxy linings seal these cans so well, we've lost kind of this potential health impact associated with our canned foods. The things that they do, though, is release quite a bit of BPA into the media. Tomatoes have been kind of the, the main poster child because they're acidic and they're going to be in that solution, probably degrading that can quicker. As someone who believes that canned tomatoes are far superior to fresh most places most of the year, this breaks my heart to hear. But regulators and industry, they read Dr. Belcher's research and they were like, OMG, we didn't know. We'll replace BPA with something. Maybe instead we'll use BPS. And that fixed it, right? Things like bisphenol S and all of these, based on their chemical structure, um, they behave almost exactly like, and sometimes more so for the endocrine disruptor effects, just like BPA. What kind of effects are we talking about here? Well, there's the diminished sperm counts, and you might be thinking to yourself, oh, that doesn't apply to me. I mean, it doesn't apply to me because that particular ship has sailed, if you take my meaning. But maybe you're like, I'm a lady, why do I care? Well, some of the work that we've done with bisphenol A shows that females are especially sensitive to changes in how their hearts function, that it can cause arrhythmias, and is potentially, with women, much more sensitive. And you know who's probably even more sensitive to endocrine disruptors? Little kids. So that's where we're really concerned, um, even during gestation of the infant in utero, uh, it's been shown that many of these chemicals cross the placenta, uh, the fetus and the developing embryo are bathed in these chemicals. And researchers believe that exposure could result in birth defects and brain development issues and premature puberty, some cancers, also diabetes and obesity. Now, I'm sure there's already some guy downstairs in the comments who's writing, just use carton tomatoes. Dude, what do you think this is? Just a regular cardboard box with tomatoes inside it? That wouldn't work. The tomatoes would soak right through. This container has to be lined with something on the inside. Probably some kind of plastic, probably polyethylene, maybe under the brand name Tetra Pak, and that very well may be an endocrine disruptor. Most plastic products release estrogenic chemicals, as these researchers found in 2011. A BPA-free label just doesn't tell you that much of value. I asked Dr. Belcher many times, in many different ways, if there's any safe food plastic, and he wouldn't say. Not because he was dodging the question, but because he doesn't know. And if that guy doesn't know, we don't know. 
So what does he do to keep his family safe? Uh, for the kitchen, we, we really try to avoid plastic. Use glass, um, you know, don't microwave your plastic. What we showed very early on in our lab is that actually heat increases the release of bisphenol A into water or the food media. Yep, this is why some people think sous vide is an inherently unhealthy way to cook, even if the fancy vacuum pack bag you get says BPA free on it. Remember, most plastic products release estrogenic chemicals. We try to use as much glass as possible. I know it's, you know, in, in our modern life, it's impossible to avoid it. And we don't even really know if limiting your plastic exposure in these ways will positively affect your health. Because endocrine disruptors do what they do in your body in very small quantities. And if you're alive here in the 21st century, they're gonna get into your body. They're in the environment. But maybe they won't be one day if you and I stop using so much damn plastic for everything. If we use the power of our pocketbooks to shift industry away from materials that are hurting us and our planet. And that, friends, is the best I've got for you at the end of this one. I mean, is glass even better for the planet? Because it's way heavier, so it takes way more fuel to transport, and I don't even know!